welcome all of you. This is the uh, press conference before the opening of the EMA International exhibition. This is a press conference on global market trends and uh, uh, prospects for the near future. Let me start by saying that this is uh, uh, a period of lights and shadows. Uh, it's been a positive year for agriculture, but some critical factors have to be identified in neighboring markets. Uh, We've seen uh, growth rates going down. In 2017, the world uh, economy grew by 3.7 percent, whereas this year forecasts uh, show a 3.2 uh, percent growth uh, going down to 3.1 percent. Uh, this is mainly due to what we daily read in newspapers, uncertainty uh, due to the uh, Italian, European and world political scenarios. Uh, from a business viewpoint uh, in agriculture and industry, there's a lot of concern about things going on uh, in terms of the uh, trade tensions between President Trump and uh, other countries such as China and Mexico, plus uh, positive possible additional geopolitical tension areas in uh, Syria and Iran with the recent sanctions in Libya and Venezuela that uh, is a market that used to be very rich but is now being completely shattered. So this being the situation, some countries are doing quite well. President Trump's policies are uh, paying off in the United States. Uh, uh, things are quite uh, uh, good in India and China and Europe as a whole. Uh, closed last year with 2.1 percent growth. So we're not experiencing a recession or stagnation. Uh, coming closer to our country, it, in Italy, the situation is a bit more wor worrisome. In 2017, growth rates were good. Uh, forecasts uh, at a world level, uh, grain production has remained quite stable. Slight decline, 1.1 percent at a global level. Some cereals doing quite well, uh, such as corn and sorghum. This is very important for uh, the livestock industry and for, uh, for ourselves and for other countries. Uh, uh, barley production is going down, um, durum and soft wheat production has gone down and uh, demand exceeds supply and uh, prices is leveled off this year because in fact we are relying on stock so prices are slightly declining but still quite stable maybe even going up in italy uh, we've had uh, bad weather conditions uh, too much rainfall during the winter and spring uh, had a negative impact on um, wheat and barley and uh, cereal production in general. But we had uh, a very good corn crop at least in Italy. This is something that we're really proud of is, is our wine production. Estimates uh, for 2018 show 49 billion hectoliters. Uh, so we are the leading producers in the world, uh, followed by France and um, Spain with 46 and 43 million respectively. So wine production is quite good and so we can hope for the best in the future because Italy invested a lot in this sector, both on marketing and production. The oil campaign 
in 2017 to 2018, so the past season um, was very positive. Uh, there was an increase by 135% over the previous year. So Italy uh, recorded plus 135%. Uh, let's not forget that the previous campaign had been particularly disastrous, uh, probably the worst uh, um, of the last 25 years. Prices uh, have been slightly declining. This year, forecasts uh, show a minus 38 percent. I'm talking about the 2018 to 2019 season, so olives are being harvested uh, uh, in this period. This is due to technical reasons. All olive uh, production is uh, alternating, so we have one good year followed by a low year, so it's a sort of cyclical production. As regards the livestock market, uh, we've seen an increase in volumes uh, while prices have slightly declined. We're particularly worried about pig production. which has been declining, uh, especially in terms of exports to China. And of course, this is going to bring prices down. And this is the only negative element in a market that is doing quite well. Another slightly negative uh, element uh, is uh, the milk price uh, declined by 3.5 percent. Uh, so we're very, very close to the break even point for uh, dairy um, farms. So if you Mm, are um, familiar with the dairy production, you certainly know that this market is not uh, doing very well this year. I've been very pleased to see that added value, especially in the second quarter, has gone up for our farmers by 0.3%. But we shouldn't forget that previous quarters uh, added value had gone down, so we're going up, but starting from an extremely low level. And this increase in added value meant an increase in employment, which is very good news for Italy. So employment grew by 2.7%. So, increase in added value, but increasing costs for agriculture. We have been monitoring the profitability of farmers, so added value has gone up, but, but prices have gone up as well, so farmers have made more money, but we need to pay attention be, because growth has not uh, transformed, it's not been converted into increased income for farmers. We have support for farmers, uh, for farmers' income. And uh, uh, Europe has supported us uh, considerably. A uh, common agricultural policy um, uh, uh, advance payment has been made available. There was no water. Draft has been affected Central and Northern European countries. So uh, CAP advance payment has been made available, which has uh, um, been given to Italy. Uh, and that's very good because this money can be used to uh, buy additional agricultural machinery. But there are two important elements to be taken into account that are uh, quite worrisome. Statistical data for the month of September indicate uh, that for CAP uh, 2014 to 2020, Italy has only spent 20.33% of that total amount. Over four years, we've only been able to spend only 20% of all the money made available. And we are one of the worst countries in Italy from this viewpoint. Another point of concern is that there are some reasons such as Liguria, Abruzzi and Friuli Venezia Giulia that are 
very much at risk. They've not been able to spend um, enough money. So probably they will not be able to spend all the money made available uh, to them before the deadline. Um, of course, in the region of Liguria, they've had they've been very um, negatively affected by bad weather conditions, but they should not forget about being able to um, use up uh, the European funds. Um, 2017 was um, very favorable in terms of sales of um, agricultural machinery to a record level of over 2.5 million tractors. Uh, that was the consequence of a number of factors such as uh, uh, very good trends uh, for uh, food production. For Europe, and we're talking about 2017 plus 13 uh, percent, uh, there was an impact uh, um, uh, from Europe and uh, the other markets. Let's look uh, at 2018. You can see that on the slide uh, we start seeing some shadows. Um, the United States is one of the few markets that are doing quite well, and the U.S. market has increased by 80 percent, Canada plus 3 percent, and Brazil is at a stand still, plus 0.2 percent. And India, I was forgetting that that's an exception, plus 15 percent. All other major economies uh, declined. Um, Europe minus 5 percent of sales in the first nine months, with some particularly negative friends, uh, uh, countries such, such as France is uh, 8 percent down, Germany 9 percent down, and Spain 10 percent down. Um, there's been a reduction in registrations in Europe. But Europe is not the only uh, negative country. Uh, Turkey recorded minus 29 percent, Russia minus 3 percent, Japan minus 8, and uh, the Worst uh, uh, is uh, the uh, Chinese market, minus 23 percent. It's a large market, uh, about half a million machines. Uh, so we've been losing a lot uh, at a global level. Uh, this decline of China can be accounted for by the reduction in subsidies for the purchase of agricultural machinery in China, because our market heavily relies on uh, public uh, subsidies uh, for mm, purchasing and sub sales of agricultural machinery. And um, uh, above India and Korea, the Korean market being quite small at a global level, have uh, been going down in terms of agricultural machinery sales. Uh, let's look at the Italian market. Last year was ex exceptional. Um, you see uh, 22,700 new tractors sold and 35,200 used units. Uh, which means that the um, machinery demand actually came to a total of 57,900 tractors. So that was a total market of about, uh, as I said, 57,900 units. So the Italian market absorbs about 58,000 units. So that's the potential of the Italian market. Unfortunately, as you've been able on the previous slide, is uh, coming from the second-hand market. Um, very recent data concerns uh, uh, registrations from January to October, minus 6% for Italy. Uh, I, I don't know whether we should be happy about that because what the best in Europe is only minus 6 percent because other countries recorded um, over 8 percent, but we're losing registrations. So 50 
15,000 approximately between January and September, talking about tractors, uh, minus 18% uh, of tractors uh, with uh, uh, trailers, and we've lost uh, a lot. Uh, in other agricultural machinery. Trailers are quite stable, 0.2%, uh, and, uh, and telescopic handlers uh, were sold in the same uh, number of units as last year. So, uh, market trend for 2018 uh, should be uh, uh, remain more or less stable. This is a negative uh, uh, data compared to 2017, but very much in line with the number of registrations of the last uh, few years. So the market's uh, stable. Let me remind you that last year we benefited from the purchases made, made before um, the regulation. We've recorded uh, unusual market uh, trends at a regional level. Some regions have done particularly well and others have done particularly bad. So we need to uh, consider that very carefully and look at individual re regions more um, carefully. So more registrations in some regions and very few in other regions. Uh, this uh, is, is a considerable impact for our farmers with production peaks in certain periods and slowdowns in other periods. So they may sell a lot for three years and then two years they have no sales. This is a very strange Italian situation that has to be taken care of. Going back to uh, second-hand units, this is a very significant diagram showing the first nine months of the year. This is the total um, Italian market, the red line going up from 33,000 in January to September 2014 to 44,124 units in 2018. So the uh, demand in Italy is going up. Agriculture in Italy needs more mechanization. But if you look at the blue line and the yellow lines, the Average, uh, except uh, for 2017, of uh, sales of new tractors uh, is quite flat, especially for larger tractors. Uh, it's going so the, the the smaller tractors are going down over 110 kilowatts. Uh, below 36 to 37 kilowatts there are less registrations so, so smaller tractors are doing worse second hand units you can see we've seen an increase by 42 percent on an annual basis we from 24 4,000 in 2014 to 35,000 in 2017. This year, forecasts indicate an additional growth for second-hand market up to 37,000 units. So with a decline in sales of new units. This uh, year it should be 57,000 units, but the second-hand can market is twice as large as the uh, one for new um, units being sold. And so we have to think of safety and emissions. Um, there are wonderful laws about safer tractors and more efficient tractors. Um, less polluting tractors, uh, but the market is going in the other direction. Uh, uh, people are not interested in new machines, they are more interested in older machines that uh, don't comply with the new emission laws because uh, units being sold are on average uh, older than 20 years. So this is something lawmakers have to take into account, uh, implementing laws whereby um, units cost more 
more, but there's no added value, while no incentives are provided to farmers to encourage them to renew their fleet. That has no impact on the market. It actually introduces distortions so much for sales in Italy. Luckily enough, Italy is producing much more than is sold in this country. Our, our companies export 70% of the machines that they manufacture. Let's look at the export market. Forecasts show a reduction of, in exports by 11% uh, for the other um, agricultural machinery. There should be a 2.4 decline. Uh, so mm, the Italian market is not going well, but the export market is not doing well either. So we have uh, a considerable de decline with 5 billion in exports. Uh, luckily enough, components and tractors uh, are quite are doing quite well with an increase uh, by 3.7 percent. You can see uh, markets in order of importance for Italy. France is number one, and then mm, the last one is the Russian Federation. Exports have been going down because the mm, French market has absorbed 11% uh, less. Um, so France has uh, recorded a 10% reduction in the, the number of registrations. Uh, luckily enough, uh, the North, Europe, uh, North American market has gone up, and our exports to the United States have increased by 17 percent, Germany um, going down, Germany going down. You can see all the percentages. Um, Italy has gained market share, Spain minus 8, UK minus 4.7, Turkey minus uh, 29 percent, and uh, you can see uh, the situation in other countries. Uh, Exports of tractors in the first six ma uh, market, uh, months declined by 6%, and other agricultural machinery, such as uh, self propelled and implements, also recorded a, a reduction. What about projections for 2018 in terms of production, considering the uh, Italian market plus exports, uh, tractors uh, reaching 1.8 billion euros, down by 8.3 percent, uh, and uh, uh, agricultural machinery coming to 4.8 9 billion um, euros against 5 billion in 2017 and uh, tr tractor parts uh, turnover is 895,000 euros plus 0.6% versus 2017 and we can see substantially the Italian agricultural machinery production fell by 3.1% in 2018, reaching a value of 11 billion compared to 7.82 last year. Uh, we need to consider produ production forecasts of gardening and groundskeeping machinery with a stable value of 800 million euros and the component sector estimated at a value of 2.7 billion or 10 percent over the previous year. So substantially, mm, the turnover of the Italian industry should reach the end of the year at 11 billion euros in line with the levels of the previous year. The, this is uh, the snapshot uh, of the current market. Let's now move on to the most important uh, part for us, which is our agenda uh, for industry. We have to consider three counterparts, uh, the European authorities, the Italian governments, and the regional authorities. And we have many pressing needs that uh, get uh, completely neglected. 
the, the market has lights and shadows. Uh, some countries are doing well, some countries are doing ba bad. So um, the impact of political trends is extremely important in agriculture. At a European level, we should remember that we have uh, so many uh, laws that are taken over from the automotive sector. They invent a new provision against uh, uh, diesel cars that are considered uh, as the worst enemies, and that uh, same regulation is then implemented uh, for tractors, uh, which are completely different. So we've been affected by provisions that were photocopied from the automotive industry and that uh, had a very um, negative impact. Uh, they, uh, the, the farmers uh, rejected all that, the market rejected all that. Uh, so the policy makers uh, wanted to reduce pollution, but the result uh, was the opposite because the market for new um, machines has gone down and uh, second-hand uh, units uh, are uh, sold uh, more and more. So more polluting vehicles uh, are very much widespread, uh, so we have um, uh, uh, extremely um, advanced regulations and safety and emissions uh, for new uh, units, uh, while second-hand units uh, get sold on the market uh, that are more polluting and uh, less controlled and safe than they should be. So we're asking uh, Brussels authorities not to copy regulations from the automotive sector, but introducing more specific and targeted provisions for agriculture. So we uh, policymakers uh, should be uh, more discerning. They should consider agricultural machinery as different from uh, cars. So we're completely different. Uh, we uh, we provide uh, um, diff completely different machines. This is the first point. Uh, Italy has asked uh, something very particular from the European market. Uh, stage 5 regulations are being implemented. Uh, we asked uh, uh, for an extension of deadlines uh, for uh, narrow um, tractors uh, to be used in vineyards, for instance. Uh, so we need an extension as well for um, the for other machines uh, because we have demonstrated uh, that uh, new engines, uh, stage 5 engines with DSC and catalytic um, systems uh, are too large. Uh, machines have to be changed uh, and adjusted. Uh, machines become longer and uh, taller and for mounting tractors having long longer machines uh, means that you can't go downhill very easily and you cannot get into the vineyards uh, um, in uh, many uh, regions in uh, this region in Trentino and having taller cars mean, means having a um, higher uh, center of gravity so um, more tipping risk so we've been promoting uh, this uh, ch change in regulations and we're discussing with the Commission and the Council. It has to be a three-party decision, so hopefully this regulation will be postponed by five years so that engine manufacturers can uh, develop their um, machines uh, um, accordingly. We cannot take provisions implemented in the automotive industry industry and apply that to ourselves. We want new regulations, but they have to be staggered over longer periods of time. We cannot have uh, new regulations on emissions every being implemented every two to three years. We need longer time frames. We need to have uh, sort of longer term investments scattered over longer periods of time that are not so impactful on our farmers. 
Let's now look at the regions, uh, because, uh, of course, uh, uh, regions have to implement uh, reg European regulations. Uh, regions uh, should be more um, homogeneous in implementing regulations. We cannot have s a sort of stop-and-go uh, situation in the different regions when it comes to implemented PSRs. Uh, we, s we can see increasing production costs for our clients, the um, situation is getting extremely complicated and uh, we have a negative economic impact. Let me now come to the national scenarios, the, the domestic scenario. For the last few years, we've been insisting on having a multi-annual plan that is stable for the gradual replacement of our tractor fleet. In Italy, we have 2,150,000 tractors, 2,150,000 tractors. So we're talking about machinery, machines that are older than 25 years on average. This is not a fleet, it's a museum. Very few of us have machines that are uh, less than 25 years on average. Uh, our farmers use use old uh, units, so we need to implement a replacement plan. Uh, we're n I'm not talking about one-off uh, scrapping campaigns uh, that uh, have uh, a negative impact on the market. We need a well-structured multi-annual plan using European funds, national funds, regional funds, whatever. But we need a, gra a gradual replacement plan. We have uh, 200 people dying in the farming industry every year. Mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, agriculture ranks a second after the uh, construction industry in terms of people dying at work. There is a, a law about that. Uh, in, it, in Italy, we have a ministerial decree um, stating that agricultural machinery have to be um, checked regularly. That was implemented very seriously, seriously that it was uh, sort of streamlined. And there is 23 che things to be checked, the braking systems, the, the tires, and so on and so forth. So many different things. Uh, three years, five months, and 25 years ago, the decree was implemented. Uh, we were the last ones in Europe to implement it. France, Spain had already implemented it many years ago. So we were the last ones. Too bad the decree states that for this revision to be implemented, uh, there's a need for an implementing decree, because those in charge of checking machinery don't know how to go about it. Uh, they cannot uh, rely on the automotive regulations. Uh, tractors are completely different. Uh, the cars don't have uh, the same features as tractors. So this uh, implemented decree has to be provided by the Ministry of Transport together with the Ministry of Agriculture. Three years, five months, and 25, 21 days. It's, this decree is kind of complicated to be drafted, but I think that uh, a technical team may need uh, maybe a month, uh, three weeks to uh, write the decree and make it available, but uh, our government has been unable to do so in over three years. So we need change. We, I haven't seen much uh, um, of a change over the last few months. I do hope to see some um, sort of uh, picking up. So uh, the Ministry of Transport has completed the process. It's now up to the Ministry of Agriculture to go through the process. 200 people dying every year. Uh, some of them could be saved by implementing correct checking provision, provisions and regulations. Now we're using old machines. This is not acceptable on a global market. We manufacture the best machines in the world and our domestic market is full of contradictions. Well, mm, policy makers are completely absent here. We should uh, make our voices heard. 
the, my last point about this is that uh, over the last few months we've observed uh, that the government's not been um, in touch with us. Um, we have uh, informed the government uh, that we are in trouble. We have a seasonal business uh, and the currently implemented decree is wrong for us. Uh, we haven't been listened to. Unemployment was going down and it's picked up and going up again. Now, I do understand uh, that the government has to take measures uh, and they all have have different ideas, but we, they should be listening to people who work because we go to work every day and when we see a piece of law, um, that law has to be in the interest of the community. We need to look at the common good and the common interests. If there's something wrong, we're telling you, listen, please do listen to us, respond to us. So we've been trying to establish some contact with the Ministry of Agriculture for a few months, but they're not listening. They're not paying any attention to us. We are an ugly and dirty business. That's right, but we're the second ones in the world in terms of manufacturing um, uh, uh, of agricultural machinery. We need to have a revision policy. You, we need to hurry up. Some farms are closing because their owners died because there was no implementing decree about checking uh, the units that, that gets used. Exports are going down. We're still a niche, a niche market, a small niche. We are working in a very small niche, accounting for about 1% of Italian GNP and a large share of Italian exports. So I'm saying that Italian businessmen are capable. We manufacture very good niche machines, machines for specialized uh, uses and special crops are all manufactured in this country. So we're very good at that. So they're ki killing our domestic market. Of course, we do export 70% of what we manufacture, but our domestic market is, is dying. This is what's going on. Let me conclude on a positive note. I don't want to uh, be angry all the time. We work in a wonderful uh, sector, uh, agriculture. Seven, so there are two points I'd like to mention. It's a, it's a, a, a 215,000 out of a total of 750,000 farms are managed by women. So the number of women working in this sector has been going up. Women account for uh, about 30 percent of the um, uh, total agricultural um, market. And there are many young people. There are 50,000 uh, farms. Um, or farmers uh, under the age of 35 years. So this is uh, this is a very favorable process. This means a renewable uh, renewal of agriculture. I'm, I'm really happy to say that an analysis showed that farms um, seem to put premiums on farmers that show to be capable of promoting and renewing their businesses. So there's a new generation of farmers uh, that are open to innovation and the use of machinery and advanced technology devices, especially for um, 4.0 agriculture. Uh, so don't ask uh, uh, my generation or my father's generation to use uh, satellite navigators and uh, advanced technology devices. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, so there, there are so many young people going back to agriculture and encouraging biodiversity. We work for the common good. Uh, we want to manufacture better food, better quality. So much being done on biodiversity and uh, enhancing the territory and local productions. Um, local productions have to be encouraged. Our territory has to be taken care of. This is what we have to do in agriculture. We need to um, encourage specific productions. Um, 
tomorrow, the 43rd uh, AIMA International Exhibition will be opened. Um, so it's an exhibition that uh, uh, is older than its president uh, and we um, were extremely satisfied about this uh, uh, exhibition 375,000 square meters 140,000 square meters net and we have uh, exhibitors from 40 uh, different countries um, so we we work on a niche market we have uh, 50,000 different models of machines on the exhibition. That's a unique uh, opportunity for you to see. Uh, two years ago, we had uh, two, over 280,000 visitors. We hope to do better than that. Uh, so EMA is uh, the leading exhibition for the Bologna Trade Fair. Mm. Thank you so much for supporting us in this adventure. So it's the second largest uh, uh, exhibition in Italy after the furniture exhibition in Milan. Uh, the uh, Milan furniture exhibition uh, is uh, the largest one. So we're, we're the second ones. And we are the largest exhibition on uh, agricultural mechanization in the world, uh, especially for specialized uh, um, culture, uh, the specialized uh, crops and uh, uses. We have large number of foreign, foreign um, exhibitors and visitors. So uh, I'll now give the floor to Massimo Coldoni, our CEO, that will tell us uh, more about the aim. I've just given you some general figures. Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank our president, uh, Alessandro. Uh, for the first time, you provided all figures and percentages. It's not been up to me, so thank you very much uh, for taking over from me. Uh, welcome, welcome to all of you. It's a great pleasure to be here for this 43rd AIMA International Exhibition. As mentioned by President Malavolti before, me. It's a long story. Emma has uh, a long story of success. And we'd like to um, stress uh, this very uh, feature of being a unique um, example of an exhibition that has been growing year after year. Uh, as uh, you very rightly said, we expect to have uh, record uh, results this time. And uh, of course, so many people have been working on the organization. So many people have put their daily work into the organization of this exhibition. We broke the record uh, uh, number of exhibitors, 1,950 uh, exhibitors, 600 of them from foreign countries. Uh, so uh, 150 countries uh, of the world, official delegations uh, from uh, 150 countries, so authorities uh, from 70 countries. So hopefully, and of course we keep our fingers crossed because say that in advance uh, can be a bad omen, but hopefully we, are, we can do better than uh, two years ago in terms of the number of visitors. Uh, so with these numbers, we're really an excellent uh, reality that uh, can, of course, uh, display uh, a, 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 an incredible number of activities. Let me briefly give you an overview of what we do. Clearly, the success of the exhibition very much depends on uh, the quality of companies participating. As you can see, we have multinational uh, companies uh, and medium, small and medium um, companies. So, 
We have so many companies that have been able to uh, display their capabilities, efficiency, uh, creativity, and technology. For this reason, we had to make a number of strategi strategic decisions uh, that have uh, to pave the way uh, for our exhibition to get better and better. We have 14 different uh, product uh, areas, and this is one of the reasons of success, a key of success of this uh, um, exhibition. We have the thematic salons. Uh, we added two thematic salons, one for digital and one for water. But, uh, we have components, gardening, multifunctional, and they are the new assets that we need to work on in the future in order to further develop uh, our uh, agricultural capabilities. Uh, we need to become more and more international, and this is, uh, it, of course, uh, a demonstration of how much we can capitalize on agricultural requirements from all over the world. Federuna Coma, the organization I represent, has been very important. We've been the organizers uh, um, of the exhibition together with the Bologna Trade Fair Board. Our goal has always been providing the best possible platform for operators to, from all over the world to come into contact uh, and interact. So, correct uh, strategic decisions to uh, catch up and be a, a leading force on the global market. We need to uh, be the leaders uh, now and in the future. This year we have uh, AIMA Digital and AIMA Hydrotech. Uh, so it's about water and irrigation, 11,000 square meters and 250 exhibitors there with a large panel of meetings and encounters uh, and uh, specific technologies. AIMA Components, uh, you know that's an exhibition in the exhibition. There's no, no uh, other such example in the world, 37,000 square meters, about a thousand exhibitors only in that sector with different meetings. AIMA Green, again, that's another um, a showcase for us. Uh, 300 exhibitors, meetings, workshops, uh, training sessions, uh, all out information on maintenance of public and private green area areas. And AMA Energy, which uh, is about new trends. Uh, uh, and here again, we can demonstrate that our companies have the know-how and the capabilities to be uh, driving forces in the future. And AIMA MIA, as previously mentioned by Alessandro, is about the multifunctional. Uh, we've always uh, said that multifunctional features have to be implemented. Uh, we have a wonderful country which is very delicate uh, and fragile as soon as we get heavier rainfall or have bad weather conditions. The country is very negatively affected. We're convinced that prevention is better than cure. And so taking action on the territory beforehand would be much better than having to deal with damage when it's already been done. And uh, then the launching pad for our exhibition has always been the international character of our uh, exhibition. We have so many uh, international companies from 49 countries, operators from 150 countries, and uh, all uh, 
international operators uh, can feel assured by th that by coming to Bologna to the AMA can find um, the, the broadest range of products and innovations that they need to know about uh, to uh, really uh, feel um, actively involved in the market. Um, we have uh, a strong and long-lasting partnership uh, with the Bologna Trade Fair. I think uh, uh, we work together to uh, bring uh, good results. Uh, we've uh, drafted a, board, a working plan, we signed a contract with a number of steps, and you can see much has been improved. The new pavilions, 28, 29, and 30, are uh, a new exhibition area. Um, the fairgrounds will be completely renewed and uh, updated very much in line with current requirements. Uh, let's not forget that organizing an exhibition is costly and uh, complicated. You need to reach targets and implement a number of actions very effectively lest to disperse energy and uh, obtain no results. We planned everything up to 2030, where Comwin's uh, decision was correct, and we uh, correctly evaluated all available elements. Uh, let's not forget uh, that the roots of agricultural mechanization are here. We are in the Motor Valley, which is very well known all over the world, especially for the automotive industry, but uh, we are uh, very important as uh, agricultural machinery manufacturers. But what we want is really uh, turning this event into something global. It has to become a reference point for all uh, companies working in this sector. And we planned a number of future activities. Um, we try to plan a completely renewed fairground and you'll be able to see that uh, with a new fair district uh, that will be increasingly upgraded and extended and improved over the next uh, three years. Uh, so we should imagine design and build places for activities to be performed uh, and where people can live and the criteria that the new fair district uh, was defined and designed on are particularly advanced and innovative. In fact, uh, what I really like to see is the, uh, uh, the aesthetic efforts. If you walk around the pavilions uh, uh, in these days, you can feel it, you can see that it's grown um, it's uh, considerably, it's improved enormously. Uh, so uh, companies will be able to show their strength and their creativity and their innovativeness. So I'd like to thank the Bologna Trade Fair Organization and uh, I'd like to thank my people, my team, and uh, uh, for such an important endeavor to uh, be successful, you need a strong and effective team. Mm, that it's all the people that uh, worked with me, uh, the president, uh, the board, uh, all the way to, through, down to the ranks and filed. I'm very, I feel very lucky and blessed because we have an amazing team of uh, people uh, that are capable and motivated, um, all of them. And of course, in order for them to be possible, thank you so much. This is meant for all of you. Of course, the team has to be led by a capable person, by a great leader that uh, is very charismatic person, Simona. Good morning, everyone, and thank you. I'm here to uh, represent one of the innovations of AIMA 2018. 
after uh, the economic scenario presented by President Malavolti and after uh, listening to the very many assets uh, offered uh, by EMA International, as uh, uh, explained by our CEO, let me now um, try and talk about uh, the main innovations at this EMA International. At the end of the past uh, edition, in 2016, we decided we had to explore the possible key areas to uh, be taken into account, emerging areas for an agriculture of the future. And we immediately thought of four areas, four words that could be further explored so the digital era, as mentioned by uh, President and our CEO, uh, and then uh, safety at work, new generations and water resources, four important areas to be further explored and promoted. The first innovation is uh, the digital agriculture. Digital agriculture is not only an area which has already been explored with a sound and well-established scientific content, but we wanted to promote the industry 4.0 plan by giving a concrete and practical example See uh, uh, and look at the impact uh, of that plan on precision agriculture. What are companies actually um, have done to implement uh, innovation? So 4.0 and digital from a scientific viewpoint uh, by means of workshops and uh, meetings, so many during the same international, but with a very special uh, dedicated uh, uh, exhibition area. We have 30 specialized uh, exhibitors that will uh, show us uh, uh, their work uh, in the area of innovation. And that will be at Pavilion 30 Ter. We'll see electronic uh, industry uh, uh, technologies, uh, drones, GPSs, uh, um, SOBAS uh, devices, uh, new software, uh, new types of software. It feels like talking a completely uh, different world very different from the bucolic rural uh, world that we were used to represent up to a few years ago. But the technological levels become so advanced and we decided to uh, express this advanced uh, um, technological level by adding something to our exhibition. While digital innovations are important and uh, intriguing, um, there's more to that because the technological level of EMA International is expressed throughout the event, everywhere. So over and above the frontiers of agricultural mechanization, we decided to pay special attention to the technical innovations in signaling in the quadriportico, the very heart of Bologna Fair, trade, uh, trade Fair District, we have many participants uh, were very satisfied. The result is uh, 28 technical innovations and 45 um, entries. So they will all be recognized and acknowledged during the gala dinner on Saturday night at Palazzo Re Enzo. So the 10th of November. Uh, so we'll be able to explore the world behind this advanced technological uh, uh, improvement. Uh, visitors by a using a device that can be downloaded from the AMA app 
that by uh, focusing on the local of technical innovations uh, will be able to obtain information in an augmented reality. So they'll be able to see and experience the impact of digitalization. Uh, they'll be able to see uh, the machines uh, being operated on the field. Let's now move on to the second theme, the second uh, area that we decided to further explore. And I'm talking about safety. Safety, uh, we have chosen EMA International to present uh, the Federuna Coma a safety project uh, that will be presented on the morning of November 8th. I'm not going to disclose uh, anything about it. You'll be listening to everything if you come on the 8th of November in the morning. It's a very ambitious project that will be ex going on throughout uh, 2019 and brought to the attention of policymakers uh, and institutions uh, who will have uh, to listen to us uh, and uh, uh, projects uh, of renewal of uh, uh, machine uh, fleet, of our machine fleet. We cannot talk about uh, technology 4.0 with no advanced sec safety levels. We can't talk about tractors that are not regular uh, regularly checked and revised. We have to close the gap. We need to decide whether we want to um, embrace the future and the present, uh, which is already about advanced technology. We don't want to go back 40 years, uh, so we need to fill the gap as rapidly as possible with the contents and ideas uh, brought uh, um, by this project um, for uh, the year to come. Then the new generations, uh, the new generations. Uh, agriculture is glamour. Uh, is glamour because we wanted to use a trendy language. So agriculture is glamour, is trending, is fashionable, is become interesting again for uh, younger generations uh, who see many opportunities uh, for developing their own um, professional careers. Um, so there are lots of uh, employment opportunities uh, and professional development opportunities for young people that want to uh, challenge themselves uh, by uh, working in agriculture. There are so many initiatives available to uh, younger, uh, younger generations. The AJA uh, International Assembly, CIA, MECAGRI Jobs Program that was organized in cooperation with UNAGMA, the Officina Live in uh, the MI Desk area, and, the, um, and some university lectures uh, live uh, that students uh, will be able to attend uh, on uh, the AIMA campus area devoted to the university research in agriculture and a more scientific approach. Um, the last uh, new theme, last but not least, of course, is water. The word is water, advanced technologies for our water resources. And uh, as uh, stated by our CEO, we have uh, created a salon, Emma Adrotech, uh, with a large number of participants already, 250 exhibitors from all over the world uh, um, that will be present at this salon, at this uh, exhibition and this exhibition. Because water is a precious resource uh, that uh, all of us uh, as citizens of the world uh, have to uh, be concerned with and we need to pay attention to future developments uh, in the uh, of our water resources uh, what have we done to promote all that 
It's taken a lot of work. We have uh, invested a lot uh, on communication and promotion for this larger and uh, more comprehensive uh, aim. And so we're keeping our fingers crossed uh, for the upcoming uh, aim International of 2018. We are confident that this exhibition will be able to express uh, innovative contents that you will be able to mm, express and disseminate accordingly. Let me just mention a number of initiatives that are new. So over and above uh, the usual social media ch channels, we said agriculture is glamour, is trendy, we specialized a lot, we embraced this very new dimension, a very youthful digital dimension. So together with Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, AIM a social team, which is the uh, our group of web uh, uh, animators that has been at work with us uh, uh, for a, a number of years with Image Line. This year we have a team of YouTubers working with us. They will animate with their videos, uh, and their video clips. Uh, they will bring life to the the different contents of the exhibition. So uh, don't forget to explore what they uh, show and what they feel about the new AIMA. That will be fun and exciting. Agriculture is trendy. And we want to read that on all, on the press and everywhere t tomorrow. Agricultural trendy, it, it is, uh, and uh, we need to open up uh, and embrace a new dimension, a more uh, glamorous dimension uh, for us as well at AMA. So we decided to organize a number of initiatives uh, um, out of exhibition, if you like, or after hours, and often, and offer something to our visitors and uh, to the public. We're expecting about 300,000 visitors, uh, so hopefully we have been able to um, offer them the best and enable them to enjoy the exhibition as much as possible. We have uh, um, planned uh, a number of initiatives that you'll be able to uh, see uh, on our official uh, web site, uh, there's going to be a white night uh, where all the uh, shops and restaurants in Bologna will stay open um, late till late hours, uh, and the cocktail party that will be organized in the Cavour Gallery tomorrow at 7 p.m., and so on and so forth. There's so lots of initiatives. So there's a lot going on. I'd like to thank ASCOM and Galleria Cavour for supporting us. They've always been um, able to uh, show their love for the, uh, the beauty of this city and the territory and the region. They can partner with us uh, so well. Um, thank you very much for your attention and enjoy this new AIMA International.